Father, we do thank you, Lord. We thank you for this gorgeous morning. We thank you, Father, for bringing us all here together to study your word and to enjoy one another's fellowship, to enjoy our fellowship together with you, Lord. We thank you so much for the grace that you've given to us and the privilege to be here to serve you and to get to know you better. We pray, Father, that your Spirit would guide us in these endeavors. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2. We did get uh, started into this chapter last week. Let's read just the first two verses of Ephesians chapter 2, the date. It is, uh, today is, what is today? March 21st. 2021. Thank you, Boyd. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Okay, we did get started into this passage last week and and we we saw that what Paul is doing here is he has he has brought us through that that prayer at the end of chapter 1 beginning in uh beginning in verses 16 and 17 and he goes down through and he prays for some specific things that uh that we need to know and we've seen already in this book of Ephesians, what Ephesians is doing is it's taking you from the foundation that Paul's laid in the book of Romans and in 1 Corinthians and Galatians, and it's, it's, it's taking us to, a, to another level of understanding. So Paul is, uh, is, is prayerful, and he is extremely... Um, detailed in in what it is that he wants for us to know it's not just about knowing god it it is that but it's about knowing god in the way that he would have us to know him today so paul prays that prayer at the end of of chapter one there and now as he goes into chapter two what he's doing is he's explaining the things that he prayed, that he just got done praying that we would know. So he prays first, much the way we do every Sunday morning, that the Lord would give us understanding, and then we look into his word and try and and glean that understanding from it. So, you know, these things, and I'm, I'm saying that to you again, because these things that Paul talks about here in the book of Ephesians, we, we, we run a danger of having heard them often enough to think that we grasp these truths the way that God wants us to, to truly grasp them. And, and, and you know as well as I do that you can read a passage of scripture a hundred times and the hundred and first time a light bulb goes off and you go, oh, look at that. When, when did that verse show up in my Bible? Well, you know, I've read that a hundred times already. So that's what Paul's doing here is he is prayerfully uh, now going to explain to us as we go through into chapter 2 what he just got done telling us that we that we ought to know through that through that prayer so he says and you 
hath he quickened. And Paul is talking about, he, he, he's, he prayed for that we would understand the power of God toward us that he wrought in Christ. And again, the, the, that, that's that, that building upon, that's comparing spiritual things with spiritual. You got the understanding in the gospel when you got saved that the Lord Jesus Christ died for your sins and rose again from the dead. That God brought, not only did he bring a, one who had died back to life, but brought him back to life because the Lord has done that before but brought him back to life in an brought him back into an endless life brought him back to a resurrected life people before like Lazarus and others in the scripture who had died and and the Lord restored life to them they he he restored to them the life that they had what what he did with Christ was different Paul says, we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. He didn't come back the same as, as, he, as he went down. So Paul is saying, he's talking about the resurrection of Christ at the end of chapter 1. But the prayer is that we would understand the power of God toward us according to the power that he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. So that means that you and I, so as, well, as you go here into chapter 2, and you, and you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. And we talked about that last week. Paul is, he, he's finished out chapter 1 with the church which is his body, the fullness of him. The fullness of him that filleth all in all. And then he goes into chapter 2 immediately, the next verse, and he starts talking about the, the raw material, that, 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 that glorious body that is the fullness of, of, of he who is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. where that came from and where it came from the root the, 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 the natural resource from which God created that is we who were dead in trespasses and sins that's the raw material he had to work with in order to create that so Paul says and you hath he quickened so it's not just that he gave us life, we were dead, and we, we talked about verse 1 last week. We were dead in trespasses and sins. We were alienated from the life of God, separated from God. If you're separated from God, you're separated from life. And that's important to understand as we go into what we're going to go into, if I can get to it, in, in verse 2, and that is walking according to the course of this world. If you're alienated from God, you're alienated from life. And the world is alienated from God. So, Paul says, You hath he quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins. God didn't, he, God gave you life out of that death, but he didn't just give you life. He gave you life according to the power that he wrought in Christ when he raised him. He gave you that new, that glorious, that resurrected, that eternal, unending life. He gave you his life. The life that you have is God's life. Unending, eternal, perfect righteousness and, and holiness. Perfect Paul says, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. You, you, are, you are a part of his life now. You're the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Now, verse 2, wherein in time past you walked. And last week we talked about 
the dispensational aspects of this passage. And we all know Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 11 And on, wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, and that whole chart, time past but now the ages to come, comes out of this passage. And we know that from from verse 11 uh, down through is 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 rich with dispensational truth. But it's not just verse 11 and down. We talked last week about the dispensational import of what Paul's doing here in the first verses where he says, in time past, you walked according to the course of this world and and, and having been dead in your trespasses and sins, that has to do not only with you being a sinner, as all men are, but as you and me being Gentiles. And, and being dead in our sins and in the uncircumcision of our flesh. And that's why Paul says trespasses here. It's only one of three times. The other time is in the, the parallel passage in Colossians. And then he says it in 1 Corinthians when he says that God has reconciled the world, the Gentiles, unto himself, not imputing their trespasses to them. And we, we looked at that idea of trespasses being... Uh, kind of sins of ignorance in the sense that people who didn't know that that was the law but they go ahead and they do it anyway and they're violating the law of their own of their own conscience so Paul says you you were dead in trespasses and sins that's a that's a uh, that's a reference to you and me as as Gentiles not just as lost sinners in the world but uh, so we talked about that last week so let's go on here in verse 2 wherein in time past you walked so now time past is not only dispensational but time past has to do with time past in your life time past before you got saved there was a time in your life when you were dead and there was a time in your life where you got alive when you got saved you heard the gospel and you believed and you trusted Christ and you passed from death into life you were resurrected you came up out of the grave and not only did you come up out of the grave bound hand and foot in grave clothes like Lazarus you came up out of the grave like the Lord Jesus Christ with eternal life, with resurrected life, with that life of power, of the power that that is this this Christian experience. It's the power of resurrection. It's the power of everything that God is doing. We've looked in as we've gone through chapter one. We've talked about this this resurrection program of God that He is doing today. He's not just, he hasn't just resurrected the Lord Jesus Christ. He hasn't just resurrected you and me. He's reconciled all things unto himself. He's bringing the universe back from alienation from him, from death. All creation is made subject to vanity. Not willingly, but by reason of of, of him who subjected the same in hope. What's the hope? The hope is the manifestation of the children of God, of you and me. Because when we are manifest gloriously as the fullness of him that filleth all in all, all of creation is going to be delivered into the glorious liberty of the children of God. That's why you were quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, so that you could be the first fruits of God's overall resurrection program, bringing life back from the dead, restoring the universe back to himself through the power that he wrought in Christ, which then he wrought in you, which through you he will work throughout the universe. The creation will be delivered into your glorious liberty. That's why you got it. So that they could get it through you. That's why you got it through Christ. So the whole program is a, resur- is, a, is a program of resurrection. It's a program of life from the dead. Pulling life out of 
death. When Paul says that that he, he's praying that we would increase in the knowledge of God, in the knowledge, get the spirit of wisdom and revelation in chapter 1 verse 17, in the knowledge of him, that's what he's talking about. To know this one that 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 brings life back from the dead, not just gives life, he gives life, but he doesn't just give life. He restores life back from the dead. And his whole program today and for you and for me out into the future is that. is a program of glorious resurrection. So <clears throat> in time past, we walked. Now we were dead in sins. Now you see that word wherein? In verse 2. What what is what is that referring to? You hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked. Well, we walked in trespasses and sins, but we walked in death. You were dead, wherein you walked. <laughs> we were walking dead. Living without life. That's why Paul says here, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world. The course of this world. Come with me to the book of Psalms, uh, 82nd Psalm. Psalm 82. We actually have looked at this chapter before in our study here in Ephesians when we were talking about principalities and powers Psalm 82 we walked according to the course of this world you know the Bible throughout uses the uh, uses the illustration of a path and there's different paths that you can go if you, if you look at the writings of Solomon especially he's, he's big on, uh, on that uh, that analogy. So you're 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 standing at a at a hub, and there's all these different roads that you can that you can choose. Paul says, "In time past, we walked according to the course." That's the idea of this world. So we 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 took we took the path more traveled. The Lord said that. Broad is the gate, wide is the way, right? That leads to destruction, and many there be that go in there. If you ever said to anyone or heard anyone say, you got to walk the straight and narrow, that's where that comes from. The way to life is narrow and the gate is straight. Few there be that find it. Paul says, in time past, we walked according to the course of this world. The course of this world, we talked talked some last week about missing the mark, you know, that sin being kind of an archery term that you miss the mark. and And we said, it's not just that. It's not just, it is that, but it's not just that. It's not, whoops, I missed. It's seeing the target in front of you turning around 180 degrees and shooting that arrow, hitting the bullseye on the other side. That's what it is. It's intentional turning away from that path, that path that leads to life. It's the way of the world. It's a rebellious path. Psalm 82 God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. That's, we, we, we looked at this verse. That's that mount of the congregation. That's the one that Satan wanted to sit at when he says, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. That's where God sits to judge the angels to to judge the gods how long now now 
Asaph here. This is a psalm of Asaph. He says, God stands to judge the mighty, to judge the gods. Now how long will ye judge unjustly? So now he's talking to men. And accept the persons of the wicked. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. You know, that's to accept the persons of the wicked and to ignore or violate the poor and the needy is the uh, is the easier and even more natural path, isn't it? Because, you know, the wicked in this case are obviously more powerful. And it is, uh, your, your inclination is to side uh, with the power because it's, easier and there may be favors there and the poor and needy what are they going to do for you right so it's the most unnatural thing in the world so you and I we understand you're not supposed to uh, prefer the persons of the wicked and you're supposed to defend the poor and the needy but we understand that because we we live in a in 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 in, the, in what is the result of 2000 years of the development of christian culture and 6,000 years of the revelation of God. If it weren't for that, that would be the dumbest thing in the world to do. Stand up for the poor and needy against the powerful. See, the course of this world is the, is the wide way. It's the broad way. It's the seemingly easy way. It's the natural way. That's kind of the point. It's the natural way. How long will you judge the unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked, defend the poor and the fatherless, do justice to the afflicted and needy, deliver the poor and needy, rid them out of the hand of the wicked? They know not. He's talking about the judges. They know not. Will Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. So there's your course of the world. They don't know. We've been talking about life. And how closely, even synonymously, the terms life and light are used in the Bible. And that idea of, 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 of walking in darkness... Walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. That idea of darkness and death, of, 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 dark, of unplugging from God, being alienated from the life of God, being darkness, and life itself being light. In him was life, and that life was the light of of men. The world, the course of the world, the, all the foundations of the earth are out of course. They're off kilter. The, the, God set a path for this world. And uh, by one man sin entered into it. And the whole thing got flipped around. That's why when, 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 when Paul walked into a into a, into a city and then preach the gospel they said he's turning the world upside down with this doctrine you know right now the people in Australia don't know they're upside down they don't know that their toilets flush the wrong way what it's water You're upside down. You don't know you're upside down. You know you 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 realize when you got saved that you were upside down. You got you got you got turned around. You got you got flipped right side up. The world looks at you and they say you're upside down. You're backwards. You know. In time past, you walked according to the course of this world. 
in time past. It's not for you and for me to be walking according to the course of this world today. In time past, we did. Peter says, let the time past of your life suffice to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. That's enough. That's enough walking backwards and upside down. We need to understand, we need to understand, number one, that this, the, the course of this world is darkness. They know not. Paul's praying that we would know, understand some things. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on. They walk on in darkness. The Lord said the blind are leading the blind. The blind lead the blind. They both fall into a ditch. They walk on. They just keep walking. You know what you do when you find yourself in darkness? You stop. Unless you don't know you're in darkness. Then you just walk on. They know not at what they stumble. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I uh, will... We'll, We'll leave that there. We'll, we'll, we'll stop there at verse 5. Look at, uh, look at Luke chapter 16 with me. It is number one, so tempting, and number two, so subtle to walk according to the course of this world for, for you and for me. It is so unnatural to do anything else. That's why Paul says you got to be, well, he uses the term this world. He says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind. Get your mind turned right side up. And 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 in order to keep your mind, you know, our our, our minds are like are, are like those those little dolls that they're they're top heavy, and if you if you let go of them, they flip over. They're 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 weighted on one side, and you can knock them around, and they come right back. And if you turn them upside down, they will just flip right over. It is natural. It is a law of physics for them to to turn that way. It is against nature for them to stand the other way. And it looks, by, by all nature, it looks like that thing is upside down. By all nature. Paul's about to say what we were by nature. We were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. You know, what's natural and what's right in this world in this world according to which we used to walk in this world what's natural and what's right is not the same what you and I are here for and what you and I are going to be there for is to be an integral part of that program of making it the same of making, of restoring nature back to the right to the right path. But right now, in this world, it's not so. So it is tempting, and it is subtle, because you walk in this world, and you just. Feel like as you, when you're walking as a Christian, you feel like you're walking upside down, looking at the world, because they're all upside down and they're looking at you. You know, you're driving down the road and all the traffic's coming at you. It's hard to say, hey, all these people are driving the wrong way. But that's the position that you and I are in. Paul talks about science falsely so-called. Talking about this world, the course of this world. You, you talk to somebody and you tell them that you don't believe in certain things that are pretty much settled science right now. 
they'll, they'll, they'll just think you're the most backward, ignorant thing that there is. They're walking on in darkness and they're looking at you. Oh, you believe that book, huh? The whole world knows better. Luke 16. <clears throat> Luke chapter 16. And let's just look at the verse. This is at the uh, coming at the end of a parable. But we're not here for the parable. Verse uh, Luke 16, verse 8. And the Lord commanded the unjust steward, because he had done wisely, for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. The children of this world know how to negotiate this world. They know how to navigate the darkness as well as any other people in the world do. They all kind of stumble over each other and they know how to do it. What we're here for is to show you the contrast again here between this world and the children of light. They walk on in darkness. Not knowing, they won't know, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. There's a difference between the children of this world and the children of light. You and I are children of light. Paul says that God has delivered us from the power of darkness. He gave us, He made us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He delivered us from the power of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son. Well, if we've been delivered from the power of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son, well, what is the kingdom of His dear Son but the kingdom of light and of life? Your Christian life won't operate on the basis of ignorance. Amen. The, 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 Paul is praying that, that we would understand. Knowing and understanding. They're two different things. Knowledge puffeth up. You want to be you want to be puffed up. You know that's that's you're on the course of this world. That's what the world is all about. Paul says, along with that knowledge, you need to have charity, and charity edifies. What does charity do? It builds people up in their knowledge, in their understanding. It's the difference between light and darkness. It's the difference between life and death. Paul says in time past, that's why he's saying it, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked, in time past you walked, according to the course of this world. It's okay to be different. It's okay to be peculiar. We were saved to be peculiar. I'm saying this to you, you know, you take this, this is one of those things that you hear over and over and over again. And it's also one of those things that you hear differently at different points in your Christian life. When you first get saved and you hear, don't walk according to the world, what you hear, you know, I don't smoke and I don't chew and I don't hang with those that do. You know. those, kind of, those kind of fleshly, uh, I don't know what smoking and chewing has to do with anything, but those, <laughs> those, those fleshly, you know, overt sins that we don't do anymore. So that's the early part of your Christian life. You get through that and you go, okay, now I'm not walking according to the world anymore. Well, then you start you hear that again if you hear it and I hope you hear it you start depending on where you are you start thinking about the wisdom of this world the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God so now I've put away all the base sins and I don't do that anymore and I'm you know I've grown beyond all of that well what about the wisdom of this world 
What about the philosophies of this world? Paul says, don't let anyone beguile you of your reward through philosophy and vain deceit. Let them steal your reward from you. Well, according to the wisdom of this world. What about the religion of this world? What about the God of this world? You know, there's, there's, there's more and more of a melding today between different churches and different sects and different denominations. And it's becoming more and more mainstream for Protestants and Catholics and Mormons and, and all of these people because everybody's got, you know, common goals. Those common goals are, Paul says, they mind earthly things and they're the enemies of the cross of Christ. Don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers just because you think you have some kind of common conservative cause. Don't, don't, don't start following the God of this world. Paul says, what, what concord hath Christ with Belial? With the temple of God with idols? Time past you walked according to the course of this world. This, is, this world is upside down. It's, it's, it's so easy to forget that. It's so tempting and it's so subtle. You hear walk not according to the course of this world. You hear that differently at different different points in your life. But hear it because it's always relevant to you. There's a difference between the children of this world and the children of light. Look at um, look at Ephesians chapter six with me. Ephesians chapter six. It's no accident there in our passage that Paul combines and, and, and couples walking according to the course of this world with walking according to the prince of the power of the air. You know, we talked some last week about that title, the prince of the power of the air, as we were going down through the, the, the larger passage in Ephesians. And we saw that the Lord Jesus Christ, he called Satan the prince of this world. The prince of this world. Paul didn't call him the prince of this world. He calls him the prince of the power of the air and the God of this world. Because Satan is working differently today. That's why Paul says that he's the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Because what Satan is doing today is different than what he had done in in time past. And what he's doing today, he's doing in the world of religion. It is not the Daniel chapters 9 and 10 and 11 with the, with the, the, the principalities and the powers fighting in the heavens and whoever wins up there is the one who wins down there and all those political uh, 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 machinations Satan is not he's not moving the kingdoms of the world around like he did in time past today he is the Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. What... what Satan is today, he is the ruler of the darkness of this world. He is the God of this world. He is the, he is the tempting serpent once again. Paul says, you know, take a look at it, 1 Corinthians 11. 
2 Corinthians. I do believe. We'll find it when we get there. It's either 1st or 2nd. Luckily for us, the two books are right next to each other. Second, Second thank you. I thought it was... I, I thought when I corrected myself, I was right. Second Corinthians 11. You know, it's interesting as you go through Paul's epistles and you look at the devil and the things that he does and the things Paul warns about, and he brings them up uh, several times here in Second Corinthians. It'd be interesting border to put around your study Satan in 2 Corinthians you get a good idea of, uh, of, of what it is that he, that he now worketh and uh, you know Satan isn't doing so much of uh, you know that, that, that baser stuff he'll, he'll, he'll do it you know he, he, he Satan would rather not have you immoral. Satan would rather have you moral and religious and self-righteous. There is, there is no end to, to the sin that comes out of personal morality and, and, and righteousness, so-called. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have a spouse, godly jealousy. When God says, I'm a jealous God, he's talking about not going after other gods. That's what Paul's got in mind here with these Christian people. I'm jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So now, it's not, you know, Paul tells these Corinthians back in 1 Corinthians that you know that you were Gentiles following after these dumb idols even as you were led. Well, now it's not the dumb idols. Now we're not worried about, you know, gods of, of, of wood and of stone and, and all the rest because we, you know, we're Christians now. We've grown past all of that. Paul says, I'm afraid. I fear. Lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another God, is that what that says? No, another Jesus. Whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Paul says, I fear. I fear that see, Satan, he's not he's he, he's a lot of things, but he ain't dumb. He he knows that we're not gonna be going after the stock of a tree and bowing down and praying to it and all the rest of that. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna take the trappings of of Christianity and he's gonna try and pull you like he like he pulled Eve like he beguiled Eve through his subtlety. He's gonna he's going to use all of his devices to pull you into that into the course of this world. As the God of this world with ministers Satan himself, it's here in 2 Corinthians, Paul says, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. See, that's Satan. And he's got ministers. Ministers who disguise themselves as ministers of righteousness. See, it's not the, it's not the guy on the corner, you know, stay, come on in there, the alley. I got, you know, it, it, that'll do. But that's not Satan's, that's not, you know that's not his uh, his big show 
the course of this world is a course, especially the course of this Christianized world. You say, this ain't a Christian world. Well, it's not a world of Christians, but it is a Christianized culture that you and I live in. People have, have a concept of what's right and wrong because it's a Christianized culture. So, so Satan, he's, he's, he's just as happy to take what's right as, it, as he is what's wrong and, and twist and warp that. That's why Paul says we're not ignorant of his devices. Darkness, ignorance, it's alienation from the life of God. You used to be dead, now you're quickened. You used to walk according to the course of this world. What course are you following now? Paul says again, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So, again, what Paul is doing there in our verse is he is, he's he's talking about the raw material that God started with. He just got done talking about where it ends up and now he goes back and he talks about where it started out. And we started out in a in a in a in a pretty bad place, dead in trespasses and sins. And Paul says, You used to walk in that. And you notice he doesn't do what I'm doing here. He doesn't tell you not to. He just assumes that for you, that was that's a part of time past. That's gone. See, he's talking to the faith. He's not talking to the Corinthians in our passage. He's talking to the faithful Ephesians. He just takes it for granted that for you walking for the, according to the course of this world is, uh, is a part of time past. I'm not Paul, so, uh, so I have to get up here and yell at you. But, uh, all right, we'll, we'll, leave it, we'll leave it there. Do you have a question or a comment? Any further words? Yeah, Trace. About the working of Satan, how you said he doesn't work the way he did in Daniel moving the nations. Yeah. And that's time past. Yeah. Did that change at the cross or the resurrection? That well, it changed with the dispensation of grace. Okay. Yeah. In in the same way that what God is doing today is different. In the dispensation of grace, he's not working with nations. He's not building a nation of people anymore. He's building a body of people from disparate nations. Satan also changed what he was doing in order to counter what what God is doing. What God is doing today is not political. It's spiritual. That's why these are spiritual wickedness in, in high places that we're fighting against. Right. God is building the body and Satan is like a counter body. He is well, he is working in the spiritual rather than the rather than the political. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But just like just as God is. Okay. And and change from what he was doing, which was political and religious. Satan's always been Belial. He's always been the false god. But he's as God was working in the political and the spiritual, now the political is the the world is wicked enough. The course of this world is is off kilter enough that the political can can you know go into hell on its own. But uh, what Satan is trying to do is to blind the minds of the children of this world. And that was Acts chapter nine. That's yes. Uh, excuse me. That started. That's as uh, uh, as a part of his working counter to the mystery. Yes, so that would have begun begun to develop in Acts nine. Yes, yep. By Acts twenty eight, it would have been under under full full steam. Yeah. Yeah, Ray. I find it interesting your last cross reference the house how the serpent beguiled Eve. 
he used God's word out of its context, right? And verse 4 is the same thing that Satan's doing, right? He preaches Jesus, not the risen and glorified Lord Jesus yeah. Christ, so he's preaching Jesus out of his context, the yep. dispensational context. The Spirit is being preached out of its dispensational context. Mm -hmm. The gospel is being preached out of its dispensational context. Yep. That's what Satan's doing. Yeah, yeah, very much. And that's a good point that that's exactly what he did. Uh, he did in the beginning. He used God's word in order to in order to wrangle his way in and, and pull her out, and away. Are with him. <laughs> yeah, and and they uh, and they might well. Yeah, yeah. Bill. Satan's never never changed from his um, original status of being a liar, a thief, and a murderer. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 his plan. You're right. It it doesn't that doesn't change. Yeah, yeah, just like the nature of God doesn't change dispensationally. Yeah. Yeah, Satan is who he always was. He just he just knows how to he just knows how to work in the time and and, and culture he's working in. Yeah.